Energy Air Force Aim Strike Let's Play, Supplementary Update 14. We're going back to Scenario 1. Let's go over the details of your mission. We've picked up a force of enemy planes in the sector west of the base at Sabulse. We believe they intend to strike the base itself. Gargoyle, fly cap in the region south of Sabulse and shut the door on any other enemy forces. Engage and destroy any enemy units which enter your sector. Unicorn will fly intercept against the force approaching from the west. Your launch time is 1200 hours. That's all, and good hunting. And off we go on a Sidewinder loaded A10A. This is a clip from my failed run, which I keep because, well, look at two. Gargoyle airborne, passing 1.5. Gargoyle, Unicorn, radar contact. Maintain runway heading. Welcome. He just can't part with those training wheels. Oh, he was only taking in the scene. Anyway, here's our proper takeoff. Gargoyle clear to taxi. Tower of Gargoyle 1 and 2 for takeoff. You're so slow, guys. I'll go with Unicorn. Gargoyle clear for Sierra Hotel departure. Climb and maintain Angel 3. Switch departure 297.6. Gargoyle clear for takeoff. So, that was one way to skip the takeoff routine. There's another one. Gargoyle airborne, passing 1.5. Gargoyle, unicorn, radar contact. Maintain runway heading. Right, let's start cutting. You can keep track of the cuts with the timer. Unicorn flight, we show you at waypoint 1. Stay back at land. Happy hunting, and stay careful, man. You too. Unicorn are flying the mission we did in the second update. However, the dialogue still seems slightly different. Gargoyle flight, we show you at waypoint 3. Target is at bearing 165. Copy on the course adjustment, Starburst. Leaving Master Arm is safe until we see something. Roger. Uniform engaging bandits. Mode. Seeing something is going to take a while. Twelve sidewinders, that's a lot, and we'll need them all. Cargo one, and you got visual. Unicorn three and four, you got a fish. Unicorn two, follow me in against bombers. Cyber contact, single group, brass bullseye, one nine five, twenty-two miles, fifty eleven, clear. Unicorn, your group, 195-22-11,000, fishbed and frogfoot, hostile. Unicorn, press the group, splash the bomber's priority. Welcome. And this goes on for a while until... Starburst, contact, single group. Declare. Gargoyle, your group, bearing 360, 25 miles, 14,000. Fishbed and Frogfoot, hostile. Coming in against target now. Those are fishbeds. We can sense their raiders. Coming in against air target. Frogfoots don't have raiders, so we'll need to sniff them out separately. Gargoyle flight, we show you at waypoint 4. There's a lock on a fishbed. Today we're going to learn a few more things about heat-seeking missiles, if we can survive a mega attack. Where are the bombers hiding? Oh, that's annoying. May 
highest. Now, as you already know, or have guessed, the diamond marker shows us what the Sidewinder's Seeker is looking at. Like those primary targets. That's handy. The Seeker actually lets us spot them before they enter the visual range. But we're getting closer, and all four frog foods will appear on the threat display anyway. Slowly but surely. That's what they tell you if you don't kill anything for too long. Nearly there. You tell him to. Can you see the diamond trail behind the plane? It locks onto flares. This never happens in Strike Fighters 2. Damn it. The optics on modern heat seeking missiles have two modes. I've got two. They have a wider field of view when they're trying to acquire a target, and then narrow it down when they start guiding. This is done to prevent flares from entering their sight and disrupting target tracking. And that's one of the reasons to make a sharp turn while dumping flares. Damn it! To make an incoming missile start looking for you and lock onto a flare instead. Gargoyle 1, target's at 12 o'clock. Gargoyle, say your state and proceed to next station. Target is at bearing 345. Copy waypoint, Starburst. Firing hard, Oh, fuck. Anyway, it can be difficult to swap your engine with a flare when a missile is already homing in on you. However, in target acquisition mode they are much more open to suggestions, especially when the seeker is not assisted by a radar. Bastards. You can use flares to prevent the enemy from getting a solid lock and launching a missile by cluttering the seeker's field of view with other heat sources. Dodge this. I've got two. Here you go. Target is at bearing three, four, five. Nice. I remember that in that Black Shark sim, now a part of the DCS family, the flare dispenser allowed you to set it up for automatically firing flares at set intervals. That is precisely to prevent guys with stingers from firing at you during your attack runs. Awesome. Also, that's the reason you see impressive flare firework displays performed by the C-130 Hercules. It's not that they expect to dodge dozens of incoming missiles, but they need to keep leaving a hot trail when they fly low in the areas where there are people with manpads. There are still more frog foods for us to find. Unicorn flight, we show you at waypoint 4. Unicorn is home already. I hope Unicorn has enough fuel for another hour. Two is stating a frog foot. I've got two. And the slowest chase ever commences. Note that the Sidewinder's buzzer is quiet, but it still has a lock onto that enemy. It's not something you see in Strike Fighters 2 where the lock is binary all or nothing. I suspect Aim Strike uses the growling intensity to indicate range. Gargoyle 1, you are overdue at waypoint. Expedite, please. See? The missile still guides. In SF2, anything below a perfect lock doesn't exist and makes the missile go ballistic. Target is at bearing 3, 4, 5. Gargoyle 2, Mark 2! Damn it! Will my side want to make it? Oh no, it can't fly that far. Okay then, let's get closer. Gargoyle 1, check mission time plan. What is your ETA to the next waypoint? The ETA is... 
division by zero. Cargo two, Fox two. That's a smash. So I caught up with them in a dive. Cargo two, Fox two. Come on, baby, come on. That was the third one. Alright, I'll head home. Just another 40 miles. Well, isn't it nice of them? So, that's what happens when you fly the A-10. Eventually the game simply gives up and tells you, OK, you win. I'm pretty sure we neither killed all the Sioux nor returned to base. But the mission is still cleared. We leave our slow colleagues behind and advance to the silly part of the mission. That side one was a dud. Right, moving on. I should have at least tried killing those guys first. They threw me off my aim too many times. And now for the hunt. Worthless. The high detail drawing distance is really short. What I get from this is that the Sidewinder is completely useless unless you are in gun range. Frogfoods can fire archers at you in this mission. I had it happen in the first run. I had to scrap that though because I got damaged, and an A-10 kept at 86% maximum thrust is a sorry sight. The rest of the mission played almost exactly the same though. Well, that was better. At some point the Sioux also started to run and two chased after one of them. Only back then he was a little too far to actually launch a missile even once. Here's the one I sent off without a full lock. And it... just vanished. The same shit happened to the second one, too. Oh yes, a video. Let's watch it. That's a gun. It's still a gun. Yes, game, we get it. The video tells me the one thing that doesn't spin in this plane is the pilot. Hey, why can't I taxi with my canopy open? And with my arm hanging out. Those real pilots have all the fun. I get an impression they plan to record commentary for those clips like they did in the first game, but something cropped up, like budget or time issues. On the other hand, the videos are obviously edited to somewhat synchronize with the music. So perhaps they just wanted people to gawk at the pretty pictures. These bombs look retarded. No, literally. Anyway, that's enough for today.